Welcome to the fifth episode of my Arduino tutorial series. Today we're going to be going over what an integrated circuit is, the 74HC595 chip and what we can use it for, the pins on this chip, the shift register, the data clock, and latch pins specifically, connecting this chip to a breadboard and programming it to do things with LEDs. So first, what is an integrated circuit? A basic description of what an integrated circuit is, is it's a circuit that's shrunk down into the size of a chip. It's those little black squares with legs that you see on circuit boards, and things look, look like this. They're obviously more complicated than this, but as a general conceptual understanding as to what it is, this will do. So what can we use this specific chip for? The 74HC595 takes three inputs and outputs eight outputs. We can use this to save pins on the Arduino for other components. Specifically, this chip holds eight bits of memory that we're using to drive the appropriate LEDs. Looking at the pins on this chip, the ones named Q0 through Q7 are the outputs, and these are the things that the LEDs will be connected to. VCC is connected to five volts, OE is an active low pin that we can send signal to using a PWM pin to enable or disable all of the output pins at once. MR is also connected to 5 volts and is also connected to the VCC pin. DS is the data pin, SHCP is the clock pin, STCP is the latch pin, and Q7 prime is serial out for sending data through. This is what we would use if we had multiple of these chips and we would be able to link them together to light more than 8 LEDs. So the DS pin, the data pin, is taking serial data in from a pin on the Arduino and it's being regulated by the clock pin. We only have 8 outputs, so once we get 8 bits of data, that data will be sent to the output pins when we activate the latch pin. But if we send more than 8 bits of data, the extra data still goes through. It goes through pin Q7 prime. So if we wanted to link two of them together, we would place another one on the breadboard and link Q7 prime of the first one to the data pin of the second one, and then complete our circuit as planned. Let's talk more specifically about the shift register and the use of the data clock and latch pins. A shift register, this one specifically, holds eight memory locations that can either hold a one or a zero. So we feed the data using the data and clock pins. The clock pin receives eight pulses from the Arduino and the data pin receives pulses in the pattern of the data at the same rate. When the data pulse is happening at the same time as the clock pulse, then this is a one. Once we get all eight pulses from these pins, enabling the latch pin copies those eight values we determine to the latch register. We have to do this because if we just directly fed the data clock information to our circuit, the LEDs would flicker randomly as the data is being loaded into the shift register. Now that you know a little bit more about this chip, let's see how we can program it to control some LEDs. So here's a sketch that turns the lights on one by one and then does it in the reverse direction. So for our variables, we have our delay time that we'll use throughout the program our latch pin, our clock pin, and our data pin, and the data that we're going to send. Update shift register is a function we wrote to save space, basically, because when we shift data into the chip, we have to first write the latch pin to low, and then to high when we're done, so the data doesn't go through in random orders. Setup is just setting up the pin modes for our latch, data, and clock pins. And for the loop, we have two loops that each run eight times, and they used bit shifting to decide which LED will be lit. So this first one starts at one, which you can basically think of like this, and it's going to shift over by whatever iteration of the loop we're in. So the first time it'll shift over one, and then it'll be in the second space, and the second time it'll take the same number, but it'll shift it over by two, so it'll be in this space then, and so on, until it does that eight times. And then the next one is basically that in reverse. We've just made a variable, a local one each time, so we can keep the same one. And it starts with that number, and it shifts it right using the same method. And that's basically it for this program. 
One thing I've noticed is if you write something like this and basically just try to make the binary counter that we made in, in earlier tutorials, but you know, way simpler, that if it encounters a number that the number before it had a one in the same position as this new number, then that LED will get a degree brighter. And then if there's a third number in a row that has that same property, then the LED will get brighter still. And in the last couple numbers in binary, when you approach 255, there's points where a light is on a lot of times, and an LED might not be able to keep up with that much power, basically. Plus, you just want them to look uniform and not have some of them becoming brighter and dimmer. I haven't figured out exactly how to solve this yet, but besides making all of them zero right afterwards, let's say writing another or updating update shift register so that it can take an input and the first time we could send out whatever this is, and then we could maybe up, up here quickly send it zero so that they all turn off. That might introduce flickering. So yeah, it's just a different kind of way you have to think about it when you're using a shift register versus just having those eight LEDs connected to the Arduino pins and you're able to control those pins individually much easier than you could control the individual bits that are in a shift register since when you shift them in, you shift them in in a least significant bit order or most significant bit order. This has been episode 5 of my Arduino tutorial series. Today we went over what an integrated circuit is what we can use the 74HC595 for, the pins on this chip, a shift register and the data clock and latch pins, connecting this chip to the breadboard, and programming it to do things with LEDs. Next time we'll go over something else I haven't decided yet, it'll be a surprise. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.